It's time now for us to start looking at the principle of alkylating enolates, and this is the beginning of chapter 25 in your, in your textbook. Uh, the importance of this is now that we've considered what an enolate is and the various ways that we can generate enolates, we're now going to just look at a simple carbon-carbon bond formation using the enolate now as a nucleophile. Uh, and, and it's this kind of mechanistic movement of electrons that we're looking at. This carbon is going to act as a nucleophile and we're going to form a new bond specifically to other carbon atoms uh, with molecules that are basically some sort of R group with a leaving group uh, on that. Remember X's can represent um, or usually represent leaving groups. Uh, typical ones can be something like a chlorine or a bromine or an iodine, your, your halides, but can be other things such as tosylates and mesylates as well. And so this is the type of movement of electrons that we are uh, that we are looking at, and our product is going to then have a brand new this bond here, um, new carbon carbon bond uh, to whatever the alkylating agent was, and of course the leaving group will have uh, been left behind. So, in dealing with this, uh, the whole of chapter 25 takes quite a bit of time to go over what is effectively this very simple reaction over here. And of course, the reason it takes so long is it's actually a little bit more complicated than what we've drawn out over here, as we have to consider all the different options for alkylating agents. And we must also look at all the various types of enolates that we can generate, either for, from like if this was a ketone, an ester, carboxylic acid, and an aldehyde as well. All right, so I'm just going to start off in, in this lecture just to quickly go over the types of alkylating agents we have. We'll do one small example, um, and then we'll do some, some uh, examples in the class. Uh, great alkylating agents uh, are, ones, uh, are things like uh, methyl with a leaving group on it, uh, such as methyl iodide. Uh, this is a very, very good alkylating uh, agent it for inlaid chemistry. All right, methyl iodide, methyl bromide, very good. Um, also quite toxic compounds. Uh, and then the compounds that have a leaving group in the allylic position, in other words, the leaving group is on the position next door to a double bond. This, these two positions here are vinylic positions, and this is the allylic position. So uh, allylic halides. Um, are excellent. And, and very similar to this are the benzylic uh, electrophiles. So uh, it's almost exactly the same. We have the double bond, but it's now part of an aromatic ring over there. This is benzylic. All right, so that's uh, the, the benzyl halides, uh, benzyl chloride, benzyl bromide, things like that um, of absolutely excellent alkylating agents for these types of reactions over there. Uh, moving on, we have good uh, alkylating agents, and these are just your primary alkyl halides, so something that looks like this, or, wh or whatever leaving group might be there. So we're looking at now primary uh, alkyl halides are good alkylating agents for, for enolates. Then we go to the next two groups, which are not so great. The uh, secondary alkyl halides are fairly slow. Uh, and so this is a secondary alkyl halide. They don't alkylate very rapidly, but you can get them to, uh, to work. Um, our halides. And then the last one are the tertiary alkyl halides. Um, and these ones are basically flippin' useless. Uh, so, so you can't use these at all for performing this type of reaction that we see over here. Um, essentially because this mechanism, what's going on over here, when the enolate acts as a nucleophile, is an SN2 reaction. Sorry, it's up here. Um, is an SN2 
reaction. Uh, and because of that, we know that tertiary alkyl halides do not undergo SN2 reactions. So this cannot be used under standard in late conditions. However, um, like a really bad television commercial, just wait, there's a little bit more, uh, and we are able to use this, but we're going to deal with the specific conditions that we will use tertiary alkyl halides at another stage. So if I can just give uh, an example that comes from your textbook, uh, just, just to kind of introduce these things. If you uh, take cyclohexanone and treat this with um, sodium hydride, um, and use the sodium hydride in excess. So there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a whole lot of the sodium hydride present, and we also do the reaction in the presence of methyl iodide as I electrophile. The product that we're going to get uh, will be where we've put methyl groups on all of the uh, alpha positions. Again, assuming that we have the alkylating agent and the base in excess. So the whole sodium hydride is going to take off um, H minus, picks up a proton, and we form the enolate. The enolate will react with one of the methyl, methyl iodides, and then the process is going to repeat itself over and over again. You should do this. Do this mechanistically. Follow this through. Practice this as an example um, of being able to do the, um, this type of chemistry. Uh, likewise, using the same starting material, we could have used um, sodium amide, all right, which I said to you is not a great base. We don't often use it, but the textbook uses it just as an example to say you can use it as a base. It's not very common. Uh, and then in the, uh, the presence of allyl bromide um, with just one equivalent of this, all right, nice strong base, fully deprotonates the one side, uh, and then we react with the allyl bromide, and we're going to get this allyl group um, on as a product over there. All right, so this is a basic uh, uh, idea of the alkylating. There's an allyl group over there. These are the very good alkylating uh, a, uh, reagents. But we will look at some more examples uh, during the lecture through, through questions that we do.